time uh, with Mass Effect 1. Uh, it's going to be probably a big episode because after we do one or two more things, we'll be ready to end the game. So, um, yeah, this might be a shorter episode uh, because it'll be it'll make more sense to cut right at Ilo right when we get to Ilos and uh, spoilers. And, uh, and then from there, just have the finale, so uh, we'll see what happens, but as you remember, at the end of the last episode, uh, Captain Anderson wanted to see us, and so we're here to speak with an old friend, the Keeper. Off screen, I went around and found the ones that I had left, and I figured I might as well start this episode off. The most triumphant music in the game. <laughs> Over 2300 XP for finishing that mission, and of course all the XP you get along the way, so there's that. And then there's one more mission I want to do uh, involving Emily Wong, and uh, it's because it's the last time her and Shepard ever meet face to face. And I think she should have been a far more important character than Bioware. Uh, allowed her to be, in a way. Because I'll, I'll tell you right now, Kalisa bin Aljalani shows up in Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. That's not huge spoilers by any means, but I think... Wrong way. I think they uh, just saw the reaction to Al Jalani in the first one, and so they thought it'd be funny to bring her back for the next two. And uh, but unfortunately, Emily Wong gets a little too busy. Hello again, Commander. I've got a proposition for you. Since you helped me get information on the crime syndicate, I've gotten a lot more backing from my publishers. I'm investigating traffic controller conditions now, and I wondered if you could help. That seems like a step down from wide-scale corruption. Actually, in a way, it's more important. This isn't about people getting rich. This is about safety. I've heard rumors that the space traffic controllers are overworked to a dangerous degree. I can't get into the control room, but you could. If you planted a bug inside, I could crack the story. This bug you want me to plant, could it interfere with traffic signals? Absolutely not. I made certain that the frequencies it uses won't interfere with anything. If you crack this story, what's likely to happen? Ideally, there will be calls to improve working conditions by hiring more controllers and upgrading systems. The Council won't pay for improvements voluntarily. This story will provide that pressure. I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can do. Give me the bug. Excellent. Just place it on a terminal with a good view of the area. Thanks again for your help. In the long run, this story is going to save lives. I can't remember if you come back to turn the mission in, but that is potentially the last time we see Emily Wong face to face. And I know exactly where to go, so <laughs> this shouldn't take long, and that's why I wanted to include it. Because I like the character of Emily Wong. And she got snubbed big time in Mass Effect 3. But that's a rant you'll have to wait <laughs> probably over a week for. Uh, if you're following me along at the time these are being posted, so sorry about that. Don't mind me, just walking over to the corner of the room. And it's as easy as that. <laughs> you just walk up there and then walk back. Of course, looking for the spot when you don't know where it is takes quite a while, actually, but... Where... I can't remember where that goes. 
That's the one to the... Okay, yeah. I don't remember. It doesn't matter when you can just automatically go wherever you need to go with these little touchpad things, so... But for RP's sake, it's more fun to... <laughs> to walk around, in my opinion. Especially in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Alright, Emily. I'm already getting readings! This is gonna make a great story! Thank you so much for your help. Here, this is everything I've got from my publisher's budget. It was no problem. Good luck with your story. It deserves to be heard. I appreciate your support. I hope this will save some lives in the long run. Thanks again for your help. I'm going to show this to my publisher. And there we go. The last time we meet Emily Wong face to face in the series. And no, that's not me, like, pushing a gimmick or anything. Like, oh, she's going to surprise show up. She literally never shows up face to face. For the rest of the series. So, oh. there is one quick dialogue thing to do before we talk to Captain Anderson, which is pretty interesting to do, so we'll go ahead and do that. It would be more interesting if I had Ashley along for this, but I don't feel like going back and switching. <laughs> Commander Shepard, it is an honor to speak with you. What's this demonstration about? I'm Charles Saraceno of the Terra Firma Party. With Armistice Day coming soon, we're making our voices heard by the alien appeasers on the Presidium. Can I count on your support in the next election? What are you running for? I'm seeking one of the five spacer seats in Parliament. They have certain Baroque conditions for a citizen to be able to vote for them. You have to spend more than six months a year in space. But you can't have stayed in any one settled system for more than a month. You do spend most of your time in space, Commander. I don't know Terra Firma's platform. What do you stand for? Our core value is that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. Politically, culturally, and in the worst case, militarily. That is not unreasonable. But some of the things these people are saying sound a bit bigoted. Excuse me, I don't believe human politics are any of your business. What the Alliance does affects everyone around it. We live in this galaxy, Mr. Saraceno. We can't pretend that what we do affects no one else. No, of course not. My apologies. I only meant to point out that other species have no right to interfere in Alliance politics. You're marking the end of the first contact war with a protest. As we have every year for the last 26 years. The war taught humanity a lesson that some would forget. If we don't stand up for ourselves, no one else will. I thought the lesson of the first contact war was that there's other life in the galaxy and they have opinions too. Perhaps so, Commander. But if aliens feel free to express their opinions at gunpoint, why shouldn't we? What happened at the mass relay was a misunderstanding. If you saw a child about to touch a gun, wouldn't you stop them? I'd pull them away, yes. I wouldn't shoot them dead. Sorry, I believe we need to work peacefully with other races. We've heard that before in human history. Well-meaning naivete leads to declarations of peace in our time. We can't allow anything like shan -Shi to happen again. I don't suppose I could convince you to issue a public statement of support for my candidacy. The support of the first human specter would be invaluable. The occupation of Shanxi couldn't happen again. We weren't even sure there were aliens to garrison against back then. It's still a powerful symbol, Commander. Shanxi is the only human territory ever occupied by an alien species. You have the right to your opinion, Mr. Saraceno, but with all due respect, I disagree with it. I understand. I'm glad you support the democratic process, at least. Thank you for your time, Commander. Remember Terra Firma on Election Day, because Terra Firma remembers you. So obviously if we uh, had had Ashley with us, she would have had something to say about <laughs> Shang-Chi being used as a, as a propaganda point. 
And if that feels familiar, just remember this game came out ten years ago. <laughs> so it was... It's not like the problems just appeared the last two years. Oh, what does this guy want? Soldier, I've got a major situation, and I need help from somebody with humanity's interests at heart. What kind of situation are we talking about? Of course, right to business. That's why humanity has the best damn fleet in the galaxy. My name is Elias Keeler. I'm an Alliance negotiator. We've got a big session coming up with the Solarians. You wouldn't believe what's riding on this. I'm fighting for humanity on this one, just like you are. I understand. It's important. So what do you need? Well, in order to do my best for humanity, I need the best resources on the market. There's a mental stimulant that increases alertness and cognitive function. It's legal, but restricted. I've purchased the monthly limit, and I need more from the medbay. Keeler, you've got a problem. You need to get treatment. It might look that way from the outside, but this is just a one-time slip-up. All the top negotiators are on stimulants close to the legal limit. It's the way the game is played. I don't see all the top negotiators soliciting help to go over the legal limit, Keeler. Maybe you're right. I've been trying to keep humanity strong, and maybe I've pushed myself too hard. I'll tell you what, this will be the last time I use the stimulant. <laughs> After this deal is finished, I'll get treated. No trade negotiation is worth ruining your life for. Let it go and get help. You don't understand. Humanity needs me, and I need that stimulus. Without it, I'll... I... I don't know anymore. I get so tired when I run out of the stimulus. I, I just need one more boost. There's no shame in having a problem, but you have to get treatment. You're... you're right. Uh, I'll go tell my assistant. I shouldn't be working like this. I, I'll... I'll get help. I'm just sorry it came to this. Yay! Huh. Let's see if I can get this to work now. Why is the music in these places always so loud? It almost seems as if the people here want an excuse not to talk to each other. I could get used to living like this. I forget how you get tallied in the... Oh, here we go. Yeah! <laughs> Shepard with the worst moves and Liara with the best moves in the galaxy. Alright, here we go. I'm glad you came, Shepard. I heard that. Pulled me off the mission, just like when they forced you to give up the Normandy. I know, I'm sorry. I wanted to warn you, but there was no way to get a message to you before you docked. I know you're pissed off right now, but you can't give up. They all think this is over, but we both know it's not. You have to go to Ilos. You have to stop Saren from using the conduit. There's only one ship that can get me into the Terminus systems undetected, and she's grounded. Citadel controls locked out all the Normandy's systems, but if we override the Ambassador's orders, we can get them to bring the Normandy back online. You can be in the Terminus systems before anyone even knows you're gone. If we steal the Normandy, you're the one left holding the bag. And if Saren finds the conduit, life as we know it is over. The Reapers will destroy us. Humans, Asari, everybody. You're the only one who can stop him, Shepard. So I'll do whatever it takes to get you on the Normandy and off this station. Stealing the Normandy is mutiny. What if the crew won't help me? The Normandy's your ship now, Commander. Her crew will follow you to the ends of the galaxy. We both know that. I won't forget this, Captain. I promise. I can unlock the Normandy from one of the consoles in the Citadel Control Center. You'll have a few minutes before anyone realizes what happened. That is a restricted area patrolled by armed guards. How are you going to get in? Leave that to me. Just make sure you're in the Normandy when the systems come back online. Damn it, Liara, he was a former Spectre candidate. <laughs> I think he can handle himself. You're gonna get yourself killed. There has to be another way. Ambassador Udina issued the lockdown order. If I can hack into the computer in his office, maybe I can override it. He won't just stand by while you use his computer. Hopefully he won't be there. If he is, I'll just have to think of something. The Ambassador will not forgive this, Captain. You will be charged with treason, a capital offense. We don't have a lot of options. I break into the Ambassador's computer, or I take my chances with the patrols in Citadel Control. 
I don't think I've ever done the Citadel control option. I should <laughs> look that up on YouTube and see what happens, but the best... I think this is much better, more satisfying anyway. You'll have a better chance if you go after the Ambassador's computer. I was hoping you'd say that. The Ambassador has made this personal. He sure has. Are you ready to get the hell off this station, Commander? So if I had more Citadel missions to do, uh, I could say not yet and go and finish those and come back. But since we don't have anything else to do, everything else is out in space, so uh, we kind of have to do this. So here Let's we go. Do it. I'll take care of the lockdown. You get down to the Normandy and tell Joker to stand by. Run! I can't remember if Udina is there if you go to his office. That would be interesting to check out, but <laughs> let's keep the momentum going here. This short episode is going to be coming to a close pretty soon. The Council has reportedly revoked the Spectre status of one of its operatives. While the unnamed operative has not yet been apprehended, a Council spokesman confirmed that corrective actions had been taken. You get that dialogue even if you uh, tell Kalisa about Saren, so... They also announced that Admiral Kahoku died of natural causes. <laughs> on an elevator ride on the way to that last keeper, so... Just like always, just like real life, everything gets covered up. when it's convenient. Hmm. No mechanic, huh? Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Decontamination. Anderson, what are you doing here? I didn't send. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just good stuff. He doesn't even think for a moment that you're going to. that Anderson's gonna punch him. He's that confident. Get us out of here, Joker. Now. If you're wondering why they don't shoot us down, it's because of our stealth systems. So there's a pretty racy scene coming up here. I don't know <laughs> if uh like the the fabled love scene that uh, got this game in hot water with the press and everything is coming up and I don't know if it'll go against Twitch guidelines or not, but I've seen people streaming that Conan Badlands game, so I would think <laughs> that this should be okay. Aw, oh, damn it, no sign of pursuit? I was hoping the council would send some ships after us. I was looking forward to putting the Normandy through her paces. Figured I'd get to see what this ship can really do. Saren's still out there. Maybe we'll get a chance to play hide-and-seek with Sovereign. You know, it doesn't seem like much fun when you say it, Commander. So you need something? I have to go. Alright, see ya. <laughs> Alright, see ya. For some reason, when you start off running and you, like, turn really fast, Shepard will hold her head to the, to the left or right, depending on which way you turn. Everybody on this ship at the moment is a fugitive, by the way. The 
Does she have anything new to say? Can't remember. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. I just wanted to talk. Of course, Shepard. What did you want to talk okay. about? I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. So nobody else will probably have anything to say, so there's no point in running around. What I will do is I'll go and talk to the requisitions or the quartermaster, whatever you want to call them. Just for a final how do you do and because I went around to the other markets on the Citadel and bought licenses and tried to find some more tal uh, armor for Tally, but nobody carries Quarian armor. <laughs> Probably because they're viewed as low class, third class citizens. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you, you got, bet, Commander. Okay, so they don't have the best gun in the game, which is unfortunate, but they don't have any Corian armor either, so there was no point in <laughs> and even checking probably, but make sure I don't have any just hanging out in my pack. Okay. Here we go. We'll fly, we'll fly to Ilos and then I'll save once I can and then I'll call it an episode there. And uh, then I'll start a second episode. And it'll be the, the finale for sure. Because I don't it shouldn't take two hours be really horrifying <laughs> if I got to like the very end and I had to leave. I won't be doing as much looking around so as I would in a like a one hundred percent playthrough. So this is out in the what they call the Terminus Systems, which is this half of the galaxy over here. Basically. That's where most of the second game takes place. Check for some last second <laughs> materials. Alright, here we go. Oh, right, this cutscene. Shepard, may I speak with you? I was just thinking about you. I have been thinking about you too, and what we are about to face. I do not know what is going to happen on Ilos. I hope we will stop Saren, of course, but part of me fears we are already too late. There is something I must tell you, in case we fail. We're not going to fail, I promise. Please, I am not looking for comfort. Saren might already have the conduit. It is time to be completely honest with each other. These could be our last moments together. Our last chance to show each other how we feel. I want this to be special. We don't have to do this. Not unless you're sure. I have never been more sure of anything in my life. Will you join with me, Shepard? Let our bodies and minds unite. Just tell me what to do.
by the goddess. That was incredible, Shepard. You were incredible. Five minutes ETA to the Mew Relay. I had better go. Duty calls. You would not want to keep Joker waiting. Shepard, whatever happens on Ilos, I just wanted to say... Thank you. For everything. So that's what all the controversy was about. <laughs> like, one of the most tame things ever. <laughs> Especially considering God of War came out before this. God of War 2. The big deal was just because you could do it with a, uh, a female shepherd and a uh, monogendered female and alien. So that was Have a big deal ten years ago. Well, stealth systems are engaged. Unless we get close enough for a visual, they won't have any idea we're here. Picking up some strange readings from the planet's surface. Take us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. We'll never make it in time on foot. Get us something closer. There is nowhere closer. I've looked. Drop us in the Mako. You need at least 100 meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. The most I can find near Saren is 20. 20 meters? No way we can make a drop in there. We have to try. Find another landing zone! There is no other landing zone! The descent angle's too steep. It's our only option. It's not an option. It's a suicide run. We don't... I can do it. Joker? I can do it. Gear up and head down to the Mako. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. We have to get inside this bunker before Saren finds the conduit. There is no way we're getting past that door with brute force. Saren found some way to open it. There must be some kind of security override somewhere in this complex. We will have to find some way to get it up and running again. Alright, so, uh, it's go time. And with that being said... I'm going to call it a very short episode there compared to the last couple. About 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, probably 30. And uh, if there was anybody watching on Twitch <laughs> that I can't see because the Twitch uh, viewer thing is always messed up, uh, I'm going to keep broadcasting. I'm just cutting off for YouTube purposes here. So. Uh, this has been POD7, and I'm signing out. <coughs> hey YouTube and Twitch, this is POD7 uh, for the what is likely the finale of Mass Effect 1 in our series here. And, uh, but first up, we gotta get through this door, somehow. Okay, so you can't hit that guy. But it's always fun to kill that first guy there. Uh, why... Okay, it's fine.
don't really recall which way you're supposed to go into this place, but <laughs> I'm just gonna go this way anyway. Boom! Showing another one over here somewhere. Okay. Okay. Didn't I see something about an armature control on <laughs> the way down here? people when this game came out just assumed that these were Protheans. Uh, like this is what they would look like if you ever saw them, but if you really think about it, they look more like the husks than Protheans, and that's not just saying that in hindsight. Like I, I, I didn't think they were Protheans when I first came here until I uh, went online to read about stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. They look like the Ood from Doctor Who. So I think what that did is that, uh, made it so that we won't have to fight one of those big, uh, dudes. One of the big, like, tank. Uh, Geth fighters, so. Like, you can just run in guns a blazing, probably, but. Since I didn't know. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I was doing in this part of the game, it worked out. Be nice if we could just randomly pick up some Corian armor somewhere. Hopefully I'm not going around in circles. That would be pretty upsetting. all over the place. Ow. So there's somebody on the other side of these roots. I guess you can just sneak up behind them or something. Or not. And I don't need that. That's all that elevator was for. Yeah. I guess I just never seen that. Cause there's there's like two branching paths around this big pillar thing in the middle. And I must always go right or something. Cause I would have remembered that elevator. Tend to remember <laughs> all these crazy elevators.
was gonna start sniping and I was like, nope. That was like the main boss of this area, by the way. <laughs> so that's, that should show you definitively how uh, easy casual or uh, narrative mode is. That's where you need to go, that elevator I just saw, but I was thinking there's some kind of lore that we need over here about the Protheans. Come, Saren already has a head start. We have to go find him before he reaches the conduit. Unless he's already found it. Then we're just walking into a trap. That is a chance we will have to take. Hold on. Something's happening. Too late. Unable to... Invading fleets. No escape. Sounds like some kind of message, but I don't recognize the language. It is probably in Prothean. This recording must be 50,000 years old. No wonder we cannot understand it. The message is all broken up, but I recognize some of the words. It's a warning against the Reaper invasion. Of course. Between the beacons and the cipher, an understanding of the Prothean language would have been transferred into your mind. Not safe. Seek refuge. Inside the archives. What's it saying? Can you make out anything useful? Fought Reapers. The Citadel. Overwhelmed. Only hope. Act of desperation. The conduit. All is lost. It said something about the conduit, but it's too degraded to help. We should go. Cannot be stopped. Cannot be stopped. So that was important because it uh, establishes that Shepard now has uh, the ability to understand Prothean language, which comes in handy two or three times in the rest of the series. It's the kind of thing you can just walk right past, <laughs> which is why it uh, pays to explore in Mass Effect. Hey bud. How's it going? Time to Austin Powers our way out of this. And now for some Mako combat. Who's excited? I have spent my life studying the Protheans, but I never dreamed I would discover anything like this. This bunker might have been the last refuge of their entire species. Just imagine what mysteries it might hold. 
Imagine what secrets it might reveal. Please, try to remember why we're here. Seren, the conduit, the fate of the entire known galaxy? I am sorry. I was swept up in the moment. I just hope we have the opportunity to study this place in detail after this is done. I thought Saren would have set some kind of trap or ambush for us. They must have been in too much of a hurry. Or we just have yet to run into it. So, uh, these little things on the wall are, uh, more important than you would think. <laughs> I don't think it's even mentioned in this game, but... What are all those things on the wall? Oh, here we go. Some kind of containers? They look like stasis pods. The Protheans probably tried to keep themselves alive through cryogenic freezing. Miko. <laughs> Quickly, run to this suspiciously open door. We shouldn't be here. Not us. Not the Geth. Not Seren. Get a good look at uh, Liara's squid horns there. Eventuality was one of many that was anticipated. This is why we sent our warning through the beacons. Looks like some kind of VI program. Pretty badly damaged. I do not sense the taint of indoctrination upon any of you. Unlike the other that passed recently, perhaps there is still hope. This is incredible. An actual Prothean VI, and I can understand it. I have been monitoring your communication since you arrived at this facility. I have translated my output into a format you will comprehend. My name is Vigil. You are safe here for the moment, but that is likely to change. Soon, nowhere will be safe. Are you some kind of artificial intelligence program? I am an advanced non-organic analysis system with personality imprints from Kesad Aishan. Chief Overseer of the Ilos Research Facility. Why did you bring me here? You must break a cycle that has continued for millions of years. But to stop it, you must understand, or you will make the same mistakes we did. The Citadel is the heart of your civilization and the seat of government, as it was with us and as it has been with every civilization that came before us. But the Citadel is a trap. The station is actually an enormous mass relay, one that links to dark space, the empty void beyond the galaxy's horizon. When the Citadel relay is activated, the Reapers will pour through, and all you know will be destroyed. How come nobody ever noticed the Citadel was an inactive mass relay? The Reapers are careful to keep the greatest secrets of the Citadel hidden. That is why they created a species of seemingly benign organic caretakers. The Keepers maintain the station's most basic functions. They enable any species that discovers the Citadel to use it without fully understanding the technology. Reliance on the Keepers ensures no other species will ever discover the Citadel's true nature. Not until the Relay is activated and the Reapers invade. 
How do the Reapers survive out in dark space? We have only theories. The researchers here came to believe the Reapers enter prolonged states of inactivity to conserve energy. This allows them to survive the thousands and thousands of years it takes for organic civilization to rebuild itself. But in this state, they are vulnerable. By retreating beyond the edges of the galaxy, they ensure no one will accidentally discover them. They keep their existence hidden until the Citadel Relay is activated. The Reapers can wipe out the Council and the entire Citadel fleet in a single surprise attack! That was our fate. Our leaders were dead before we even realized we were under attack. The Reapers seized control of the Citadel, and through it, the mass relays. Communication and transportation across our empire were crippled. Each star system was isolated, cut off from the others. Easy prey for the Reaper fleets. Over the next decades, the Reapers systematically obliterated our people. World by world, system by system, they methodically wiped us out. The war was lost. If you'd surrendered, they might have let you live. No offer of surrender was ever given. Our enemy had a single goal. The extinction of all advanced organic life. Through the Citadel, the Reapers had access to all our records, maps, census data. Information is power, and they knew everything about us. Their fleets advanced across every settled region of the galaxy. Some worlds were utterly destroyed. Others were conquered, their populations enslaved. These indoctrinated servants became sleeper agents under Reaper control. Taken in as refugees by other Protheans, they betrayed them to the machines. Within a few centuries, the Reapers had killed or enslaved every Prothean in the galaxy. They were relentless, brutal, and absolutely thorough. I don't understand. Where did the Reapers go after they conquered your people? Our worlds were stripped bare, harvested by the indoctrinated slaves. Everything of value, all resources, all technology was taken. Certain that all advanced organic life had been extinguished, the Reapers retreated back through the Citadel Relay into dark space, sealing it behind them. All evidence of the Reaper invasion had been wiped away. Only their indoctrinated slaves were left behind, abandoned. Mindless husks, no longer capable of independent thought, the indoctrinated soon starved or died of exposure. The genocide of the Protheans was complete. What do the Reapers get out of this? Why do they keep repeating this pattern of genocide over and over? The Reapers are alien, unknowable. Perhaps they need slaves or resources. More likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend. In the end, what does it matter? Your survival depends on stopping them, not in understanding them. You said you brought me here for a reason. Tell me what I need to do. The conduit is the key. Before the Reapers attacked, we Protheans were on the cusp of unlocking the mysteries behind mass relay technology. Ilos was a top secret facility. Sorry about the Here, tornado test. <laughs> tornado signal test. Relay, one that linked directly Usually it's at noon, I don't know why it's at 10 the relay now. The conduit is not a weapon. It is a backdoor onto the Citadel. How did you manage to stay hidden? All official records of our project were destroyed in the initial attack on the Citadel. While the Prothean Empire came crashing down, Ilos was spared. We severed all communication with the outside, and our facility went dark. The personnel retreated underground into these archives. To conserve resources, everyone was put into cryogenic stasis. I was programmed to monitor the facility and wake the staff when the danger had passed. But the genocide of an entire species is a long, slow process. Years passed, decades, centuries. The Reapers persisted, and my energy reserves were dwindling. You should have fought. We were a few hundred against a galactic invasion fleet. Our only hope was to remain undetected. 
I began to disable the life support of non-essential personnel. First support staff, then security. One by one, their pods were shut down to conserve energy. Eventually, only the stasis pods of the top scientists remained active. Even these were in danger of failing when the Reapers finally retreated back through the Citadel relay. There were hundreds of stasis pods out there. You just shut them down? You killed them? You were programmed to protect them, not kill them. This outcome was not completely unforeseen. My actions were a result of contingency programming entered on my creation. I bet they didn't tell the non-essential staff about this contingency. I saved key personnel. When the Reapers retreated, the top researchers were still alive. My actions are the only reason any hope remains. When the researchers woke, they realized the Prothean species was doomed. There were only a dozen individuals left, far too few to sustain a viable population. Yet they vowed to find some way to stop the Reapers from returning. A way to break the cycle forever. And they knew the Keepers were the key. Aren't they under the influence of the Reapers? The Keepers are controlled by the Citadel. Before each invasion, a signal is sent through the station compelling the Keepers to activate the Citadel relay. After decades of feverish study, the scientists discovered a way to alter this signal. Using the conduit, they gained access to the Citadel and made the modifications. This time, when Sovereign sent the signal to the Citadel, the Keepers ignored it. The Reapers are trapped in dark space. Saren must have some plan to undo everything you did. The one you call Saren will use the conduit to bypass the Citadel's defenses. Once inside, he will transfer control of the station to Sovereign. Sovereign will override the Citadel systems and manually open the relay. And the cycle of extinction will begin again. Is there any way we can stop them? Oh, a data file in my console. That camera view was bad. <laughs> When you reach the Citadel's master control unit, upload it to the station. It will corrupt the Citadel's security protocols and give you temporary control of the station. It might give you a chance against Sovereign. Wait, where's the Citadel's master control unit? I've never heard of anything like that. Through the conduit, follow Saren. He will lead you to your destination. So, when the Reapers created the Citadel, they created the Keepers as well? A more likely scenario is that the Keepers were one of the early harvested civilizations. Perhaps the very first. Perhaps they responded well to indoctrination, or the Reapers simply bred them to be obedient. In any case, they were left behind to operate and maintain the Citadel. But the Keepers are no longer directly controlled by Sovereign or its ilk. They evolved so that they only respond to the signals emitted by the Citadel itself. When the Protheans altered the Citadel signals, they broke Sovereign's hold over the Keepers. Now, they are completely harmless. Sovereign must have realized organic races were difficult to control. A likely hypothesis. The Keepers evolved in an unanticipated direction. Non-organic servants like the Geth would be more predictable. If the Reapers are trapped in dark space, how did Sovereign get here? It is logical to assume the Reapers would leave one of their own behind after each extinction. A sentinel to pave the way for their inevitable return. Like those in dark space, Sovereign probably spent most of the last 50,000 years in a state of hibernation. Periodically, it would wake to analyze the situation. Keeping its existence hidden, it would evaluate the state of galactic civilization. And when the time was right, it would signal the Citadel and usher in the next Reaper invasion. But this time the signal failed. The Keepers did not respond. Sovereign's allies were trapped in the void. Alone, it was forced to try and discover what had gone wrong. Sovereign's the largest ship in the galaxy. Why all this secret? Why not just attack the Citadel? Sovereign is not invincible. Revealing its true nature would have united the forces of every organic species against it. Even a Reaper couldn't survive such odds. 
But the Reapers are patient. They will not rush into the unknown. Sovereign could have been planning this for centuries, moving deliberately, gathering allies. Slowly, it has assembled the pieces of the puzzle, working through agents to keep itself hidden. Saren is the most visible pawn of the Reapers, but I doubt he was the first. Now Sovereign has grown bold. Whether from confidence or desperation, I cannot say. But it is determined to reopen the portal to Dark Space. What happened to the survivors from the Conduit Project? They used the Conduit to gain access to the Citadel. But the Conduit is only a prototype. The portal only links in one direction, so they were trapped on the station. I do not know what became of them then. It is unlikely they found any food or water on the station. I fear they suffered a slow, grim death. I only know they succeeded in their mission to seal the relay. Your presence here proves their sacrifice was not in vain. Saren's got enough of a head start. Grab that data file and let's go. Shepard, are you sure? Who knows how much longer Vigil will be here? Even now the projection is weak. This might be our only chance to speak with it, our only link to the knowledge of the Protheans. It is the opportunity of a lifetime. It might know something useful. I will provide whatever information I can. My data banks, however, are limited to information directly related to stopping the Reaper invasion. So basically, if you accidentally hit let's go, and you, but you wanted to read more of this, that's what this is for. What about the beacon on Eden Prime? And the one on Vermeer? What were they for? At our apex, the beacons spanned the breadth of our empire. We used them as a single galaxy-wide network to transmit data and communications rapidly from world to world. Virtually all the beacons were destroyed during the invasion. But once the Reapers were gone, the survivors here on Ilos decided to risk sending out a message. We knew it was unlikely there were other survivors, but if there were, we wanted them to know about Ilos. We wanted to give them hope, so a message was sent across the network. You could have exposed yourself to the Reapers. In truth, we didn't expect any of the beacons would still function, but we had to try. If there were survivors, we had to reach them. The message was meant for our own people. It was coded so only organic beings could interpret it. We still didn't understand the power of Reaper indoctrination. We never realized it could lead an agent of the machines, like Saren, to this world. But it has also led you here. So perhaps we did not fail after all. I've got the file, come on. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit, not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. And he's dead. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of heavy stuff going on there. You basically just drove through hundreds of thousands of corpses. Or hundreds or thousands, not hundreds of thousands. Time to stop Saren, if we can. Try not to take too much damage here, because <laughs> the final run uh, <laughs> up to the conduit is you can get beat up pretty good <laughs> let's just say that okay. for some reason I was thinking there was like a split path but surely not 
must be thinking of a different part. of the lighting in this section. Uh, you can tell it's an old dusty place because of the way the sun shines through it, all the dust coming down. Probably more fun to get out and shoot those guys, but... <laughs> We're in a hurry here. I don't want this episode to be too long. Ugh, oh, Mako, why? Okay. Nice. <laughs> Splattered him all over the place. Doing pretty good, no damage so far. That must be <laughs> another advantage of casual difficulty. And here we go. There, the conduit. It's incredible. We don't have time to admire the view. We have to get through that relay, and these Geth aren't going to make it easy on us. Meanwhile... On the, uh, the higher difficulties, this part is messed up, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, it's very hard, in my opinion. Because if you get hit by one of those things, you're done, basically. <laughs> I always do the boost into that. I don't know if it helps or not, but... It's fun to do, so. Oh, sounds like somebody started laundry in the other room. Please begin emergency evacuation. That seemingly innocuous statue of a mass relay actually is one. Poor Mako. That's the end of our friend. The last time we ever see the Mako. Come on. This is not a drill. The 
the Presidium is experiencing severe system malfunctions across the entire level. All non-emergency personnel must evacuate immediately. Give me a rundown of the damage. We have lost all primary power to the level. Environmental controls are not responding. Class 3 fires are burning in sectors 2, 3, 6, and 7. Civilian casualties are high. I am also detecting numerous unauthorized synthetic life forms throughout the station. They are believed to be hostile. Please approach with caution. What happened to the Council? In accordance with standard emergency procedures, the Council has been evacuated to the Destiny Ascension. Where's Saren? Former Spectre agent Saren Arturius is near the vicinity of the Council Chamber. A warrant has been issued for his arrest, though Citadel Security is unable to respond at this time. Come on! We need to stop Saren before it's too late! Please begin the emergency evacuation. Guys, face the other way. We're not going to be going out that way. Killing random cre keepers. The Citadel's closing. They're sealing the station. Don't let the enemy ships inside the arms. Sovereign just doesn't care. vibes you're picking up from this are purely intentional, I promise. Magnet boots on. Now it's time for some fighting. So, we'll say, well, we'll level up and then we'll save. The Aura Stasis is very helpful on the final boss fight if you're playing on a higher difficulty than I am. Uh, he should be pretty much a chump <laughs> on casual difficulty, so I'm not too worried about it. Ooh, that might be good for Liara. Nope. <laughs> I'll take it. Go. 
So that's Sovereign up there. So we're actually heading up the Citadel Tower. Everybody's got the right guns. There's a juggernaut that comes up here pretty soon. Quit shooting me from behind, <laughs> jerks. Got him. There was a option to press A there, but I don't know why. <laughs> why there would have been. Uh, I can't remember what's coming up. There's a part where you have to fight turrets. That can be pretty difficult. If you're if you focused on like short range combat throughout your playthrough, but since I do a lot of long range they they're not pushovers by any means, but on casual difficulty they will be, but Helps that I have the uh, the right ammo selected. By the way, uh, yeah, it's up here. For some reason I was thinking there would be guys to shoot over there. So you see the X on the mini-map. Because that's there. So those will help tremendously <laughs> against this uh, dropship. See, we do like hardly anything to it. Oh, I fell down. That's not good. Run. with two, but three is obviously more preferable. I just happen to think, oh, it'll be faster <laughs> if I do the third one. Since I'm a long-range player, I almost always just activate those two, shoot across the battlefield, but and it takes longer, so... Instinctually knew it was gonna happen, and so he came running to try to stop the atrocities of war.
getting a lag spike in the final section of the game. Got all the turrets, I think, so. Should just be ground troops from now on. I don't think there's a second segment like that. Two. Life support's still on because she takes her <laughs> her helmet off for this part. There's hardly any ever there's hardly ever any grenade like refills. I don't know how come, but it's fixed in the later games. <laughs> oh, Hello. Anybody else? Oh, there is somebody else. Saren, stop. Pretty sure that was a Caden grunt there, not a tally. Wouldn't make it in time, Shepard. In time for what? The final confrontation. I think we both expected it would end like this. You've lost. You know that, don't you? In a few minutes, Sovereign will have full control of all the Citadel systems. The relay will open. The Reapers will return. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. You survived our encounter on Vermeer, but I've changed since then. Improved. Sovereign has upgraded me. You let Sovereign implant you? Are you insane? I suppose I should thank you, Shepard. After Vermeer, I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. About Sovereign manipulating me. About indoctrination. The doubts began to eat away at me. Sovereign sensed my hesitation. I was implanted to strengthen my resolve. Now my doubts are gone. I believe in Sovereign completely. I understand that the Reapers need organics. Join us, and Sovereign will find a place for you, too. Sovereign's controlling you through your implants. Don't you see that? The relationship is symbiotic. Organic and machine intertwined. A union of flesh and spirit. The strengths of both, the weaknesses of neither. I am a vision of the future, Shepard. The evolution of all organic life. This is our destiny. Join Sovereign and experience a true rebirth. Sovereign hasn't won yet. I can stop it from taking control of the station. Step aside and the invasion will never happen. 
We can't stop it. Not forever. You saw the visions. You saw what happened to the Protheans. The Reapers are too powerful. Some part of you must still realize this is wrong. You can fight this. Maybe you're right. Maybe there is still a chance for... The implants. Sovereign is too strong. I'm sorry. It is too late for me. It's not over yet. You can still redeem yourself. So you pretty much have to have a full Paragon bar to talk him into doing that. For obvious reasons. You skip a whole part of a boss fight. Vigil's data file worked. I've got control of all systems. Quick! Open the station's arms! Maybe the fleet can take Sovereign down before he regains control of the station. See if you can open a communications channel. Destiny Ascension. Main drives offline. Kinetic barriers down 40%. The Council is on board. I repeat, the Council is on board. Normandy to the Citadel. Normandy to the Citadel. Please tell me that's you, Commander. I'm here, Joker. We caught that distress call, Commander. I'm sitting here in the Endura sector with the entire Arcturus fleet. We can save the Ascension. Just unlock the relays around the Citadel and we'll send the cavalry in. Are you sure about this, Shepard? Human casualties will be very high if you send your fleet in now. This is bigger than humanity. Sovereign is a threat to every organic species in the galaxy. True. That's why you can't waste reinforcements trying to save the Council. You must hold them back until the Citadel arms open up and the human fleet can go after Sovereign. What's the order, Commander? Come in now to save the Ascension, or hold back? So there's... Three options here. <laughs> Only one of them saves the council. Um, I don't, this is the Paragon option, of course, but uh, I don't. I've, I've never seen anybody pick Concentrate on Sovereign, so I don't know what happens there. But obviously, let the council die. As the it's basically this is basically the same ending. It's just the council is dead. Uh, and you still lose quite a bit of humans, so... Uh, but it doesn't matter. If, if you want to look up what happens, just search for a Renegade playthrough. I'm sure they'll, they'll have many, many examples of different ways this ends, so... Opening the relays now, Joker. We need to save the Ascension, no matter what the cost. I hope the Council appreciates this. Alliance ships, move in. Save the Destiny Ascension. Commander, we're picking up reinforcements. It's the Alliance. Thank the Goddess. Make sure he's dead.
He's dead. stuck on something. For some reason I switched my gun all of a sudden. It's always fun. If you want a real challenge, try to kill him with a melee hit. <laughs> melee kills are very rare in this game, in my opinion. On casual difficulty, it probably wouldn't be very hard though. I just didn't get to him in time to. My companions shot him. It's shields are now. Now's our chance. Hit it with everything we got. Cargo like blank. We're going in. Sniped. Good.
Oh, this, uh... I'm not sure whether to talk or not because I don't want to get copyright strikes, but I don't want to undermine the... the moment of the scene. Take it easy. It's over. You're safe now. Where's the commander? It's Saren, he's back! Oh no, that's fine. It's just little old me. Not quite over yet, but that was the final combat of the game, so. Ambassador, Captain, Commander Shepard. We have gathered here to recognize the enormous contributions of the Alliance forces in the war against Sovereign and the Geth. Many humans lost their lives in the battle to save the Citadel. Brave and courageous soldiers who willingly gave their lives so that we, the Council, might live. There is no greater sacrifice, and we share your grief over the tragic loss of so many noble men and women. The Council also owes you a great personal debt, Commander, one we can never repay. You saved not just our lives, but the lives of billions from Sovereign and the Reapers. Commander Shepard, your heroic and selfless actions serve as a symbol of everything humanity and the Alliance stand for. And though we cannot bring back those valiant soldiers who gave their lives to save ours, we can honor their memories through our actions. Humanity has shown it is ready to stand as a defender and protector of the galaxy. You have proved you are worthy to join our ranks and serve beside us on the Citadel Council. Counselor, on behalf of Humanity and the Alliance, we thank you for this prestigious honor and humbly accept we will need a list of potential candidates to fill Humanity's seat on the Council. Given all that has happened, I am sure your recommendation will carry a great deal of weight, Commander. Do you support any particular candidate? So the, the temptation is to go with Captain Anderson. Uh, Udina, as weaselly as he is, he's still a politician, so... All the behind-the-scenes stuff that never shows up in a move, uh, a game like this or a movie like this, he would be able to do. So, uh, I could say it's not up to me, though. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I've ever done that. Let's go ahead and do that. Let the politicians figure this one out. I agree with the commander. This is too important to rush into. Of course, Ambassador. We will welcome your candidates with open arms, whomever they may be. Sovereign's defeat marks the beginning of a new era for both humanity and the Council. Sovereign was only a vanguard. The Reaper fleet is still coming. Hundreds of ships, maybe thousands. And I'm gonna find some way to stop them. Boy! Shepard's right. Humanity is ready to do its part. United with the rest of the Council, we have the strength to overcome any challenge. When the Reapers come, we must stand side by side. We must fight against them as one. And together, we will drive them back into dark space. a random huge ship out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's our hero. That's our fem ship. Well, that was a heck of a ride. 
took three years to complete for me. <laughs> if you consider the, the gap between episode one and episode two. I am trying to talk over this as best as I can because I know this is definitely uh, one of the songs that people get copyright strikes for. Uh, not that I'm too worried about it. The first episode got a copyright strike and it's still up three years later. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to move on to Mass Effect 2 once I play through again and get Shepard up to level 60. There's no credits uh, sequence or like cutscene or anything. So, um, actually, can I skip the credits? Yeah, there we go. Uh, I recommend going through the credits because uh, this was a hell of a team uh, that stuck together through the whole game. And uh, once Bioware was bought out by EA, several of them ended up leaving. Uh, although many stuck around for Mass Effect 2, and then once Mass Effect 2 was done, there was quite a quite an exodus <laughs> of the team. So. Go through the credits on YouTube and uh, uh, give them their proper due. I've mentioned many of the vocal cast, but there's plenty of uh, producers and artists and musicians and computer uh, engineers and all kinds of different things that uh, that you should go through and look up. Yeah, these are the only two I haven't beat it on hardcore apparently. But that, I don't know if that's just because this is the uh, the Xbox One version or not. But I have everything else. <laughs> that one was pretty hard. Uh, or not that one. Where's the? I think there's one for the uh, combat simulator that I didn't show off in this run. But I like the uh, the fact that all these achievements have little medals uh, to each of them. Uh, as you see here, if you play through the majority of the game with uh, different members, companions, uh, you get an achievement. And what you have to do is you have to play with a, with a companion in your group pretty much as soon as you pick up, if you do, uh, if you pick up Liara first, if you do that, uh, and then run through the rest of the game, you can get it with everybody. Uh, but, so this basically means there's six companions, so that's three times through the game. <laughs> Which is pretty nuts, considering, I think the statistics were that less than 50% of people finished the first game. Like, not even just beat it and try it again and stop, but just didn't beat it the first time. Uh, at least that's the PC's st statistics anyway. I don't know if they have that for Xbox. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that they, uh, for different achievements in this game, you were able to, uh... Like, different ones. Like those companion ones have uh, buffs, and then all of these unlock barrier talent tree for all subsequent characters. That just means that uh, when you start a new shepherd, you have an extra power slot, and uh, you can choose from all of these different ones as your extra. So you can be a soldier and have sabotage or first uh, uh, neural shock and stuff like that. So, uh, that's where we're going to end it. Uh, actually, Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Let's, let's have some deja vu Classified right quick. So I can show you how Secure importing connection. your uh, previous save works. Secure connection confirmed. A level 50 shepherd. And uh, you just select that, it takes you straight in. 
And now I'm getting a lag spike. <laughs> Wouldn't be uh, the end of this series, this first part of this series, well, what without Shepard? more lag. So, grew up in the um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know when Mass Effect Two will start. Probably sometime around this weekend, depending on how long it takes to beat this game again. Held off enemy forces. And it's not even necessarily that the only the it's beating the game again, it's getting to level 60, which is the level, the level cap. And uh, when you import your character to Mass Effect 2, you get a certain amount of stuff for importing a Shepard from the previous game. But if it's a level 60 Shepard, then you get even more perks. I think you get like 600,000 credits or something like that, and bonus materials and resources. and. So it's definitely worth it, which is why I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> it will definitely speed up the uh, the playthrough of Mass Effect 2, which easily has twice the content of Mass Effect 1, uh, because you have twice as many companions to deal with. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Oop, sorry about that. Going to go ahead and start it there, stop it there. Because, uh... Initiating transmission sequence. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't need to see this again. And it's not like I'm gonna start playing through again. I'm just gonna play... We are through all the decisions and stuff and save and then... Go on with my day and then maybe come back tonight and really play through the night or something. <laughs> to get this over with. So, uh... This has been POD7. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter, P underscore O underscore D7. Uh, and subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment, let me know what you thought about the series and where you think the series should go going forward. Uh, this has been POD7, and I'm signing out.